All right, we're live. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you very much uh, for those who are showing up, those who will show up, and uh, for you people watching in the future, hello from the past. I am uh, Dave Tyner with NVIDIA, and today we're, at last, we're gonna go through the, um, the baking of a uh, flow simulation, fluid smoke simulation uh, into a VDB sequence. And uh, a lot of people have been asking me about that and haven't really had a chance to, to do it, but now I'm really glad that we're going to do it. Um, so, yeah, so generally I like to use these, um, generally I like to do these on Friday, but uh, my kids are visiting from Colorado, so we're going to the beach tomorrow, so that's off. And, uh, and so we're doing it on Thursday. And I generally like to do a live sync workflow is what I'm trying to do for Fridays but uh, everybody's gone, so I could live sync with myself, and maybe I will. Uh, we'll have to see. All right, so I'm gonna slide this guy over. Okay, so yes, we're gonna be going through this uh, flow sim to VDB, and I'm basically gonna take you uh, really just a brief review from last week's stream on how to rig a physics vehicle and drive it around and stuff and record it. If you watch that stream um, at the end when I recorded it, uh, the beginning of the recording was really uh, the beginning of the the, the um, physics recording uh, was very, I don't know, it was bad. And that was because I didn't set my time range long enough and I went back, I overlapped back to zero. And so the frames were competing against each other. And that's why it smoothed out um, a couple hundred frames in because, uh, because I did that bad on me. Uh, but we're going to be looking at that just super, super quick. Um, and then we're going to be looking at the project stages here. Basically, I like to keep everything separate, right? As much as possible, everything separate so that I'm, I'm working non-destructively at all times. So I have my, um, my base level vehicle. And for today, we're gonna be using this awesome uh, sci-fi rover from TurboSquid. It's, um, it's super, super cool. And, uh, and, and I like this model a lot. So, um, and it kind of fits the, the stage I wanted to do. But, um, you know, you can do a bunch of stuff. Uh, basically what I did for the Remac demo uh, at GTC in the fall was uh, basically this same workflow, same everything, was just simulate the vehicle, record the animation, uh, and then play with your flow settings a bunch and then bake it to a VDB and then you get your final, final, final there. All right, sweet. So let's see if, um, hey, good morning. Good morning, AI NPCs. Yes. Oh, is it is it crazy? The mic is it crazy loud? Let me know. I can turn it down. Oh, it's huge. Gotcha. Yes. <laughs> gotcha. Yes. Uh, all right. Oh, also, what I noticed from the last stream was that whenever I did anything on the in create, it kind of cut out the stream and is a little bit choppy. So if that's happening, I have um, uh, a remote desktop into my son's computer, and uh, I can take that over and try to run it from there, and maybe that'll help with the chop, but just let me know. All right, cool. So yeah, so we're going to do that little review. We're going to talk about the layer stack for the flow stage, and then basically the order of operations here, which is uh, you know rig the physics vehicle in one stage, and you're going to animate it in another stage. And then you're going to um, you're going to want to add your flow nodes to that baked animation. You're not going to want to do it at no time will you try to bake your flow simulation while you're driving it around in real time. It's just it it won't work. It doesn't make sense. And then we're going to um, push that uh, push that VDB sequence into a volume material. And uh, okay. So this is um, basically what I had. So I put this together yesterday real quick. Uh, it definitely will require more tweaking on my part, but um, it's going to be good enough just to show you guys what's going on here. I think at force fields, uh, yeah. You can't, but there is a way to, um, to fake the wind. Hey, what's going on, Evolver? All right, uh, all right. So here's the sim. And then again, please tell me, Twin Snakes, how's it going? Uh, please tell me if um, if the stream gets choppy when I do this. All right, so here, and I have 
you can see we're colliding with the wheels. Don't worry too much about uh, how it looks right now. <laughs> and uh, you're going to see it like cut out. Of course, I'm going to point out all the things are wrong with it like that. Uh, real time, when you when you're baking, sorry, when you're creating the flow simulation in real time, it's not necessarily exactly how it's going to turn out uh, when you when you bake it to VDBs in path trace mode. So, um, but you, what you want to do is just kind of get the gist of what you're trying to do here. So, uh, so yep, I have that. And we're going to go through and put this all together, and you're going to hear me mumble to myself and try to bang my head against the wall. Uh, it seems like I have to work with Flow for a long time to remember all the settings. Oh, God, thank you. What an idiot. What an idiot. Let me just going to go. Let's just do that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. How do I internet? All right, so let's do this again. So there it is. You see the flow, it's colliding with the wheels. We're creating like this kind of big dust thing happening here on this terrain. And thank you, thank you. Yeah, and like I said, what you're trying to get is approximately what you want out of the real-time flow because when you cook it to V2B, it's, it's going to hopefully fill in these gaps. All right, so that's, uh, that's that. So if we take a look over here at uh, the layer stack, of course, I have split out my layer and my stage. So you should do that too when you're working with layers, just so you make sure you're working in the right authoring layer. Um, I have my physics vehicle, and uh, I have a, a nested sublayer of the actual rover, which is the one that came from TurboSquid. By the way, you can download it in a USD format. Goes right into Omniverse. All the all the MDLs are there. It's like it's nice. And then I have my train, which came from 3ds Max. And if people are asking um, to show a live sync between 3ds Max and and um, create, I can definitely do that. And we can modify the train and mess with the height map and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so let's just take a look at some of the stages here. So my physics vehicle is just the rover sitting on a flat plane. And in this stage, um, I have the rover as a sublayer. And then in the, um, in the root layer here is where I have the wizard vehicle. And if you go back in, in the, uh, the other stream, you can see how that's done. And that is about it. I believe I can drive it around here. A space bar. I have my Xbox controller here. Xbox, for me, it works better than um, works better than the PS4 controller, even though I'd never say that out loud. All right. And by the way, if you want to drive it around, uh, you, you just uh, toggle off that gamepad camera control, and then you can control the vehicle with it. All right. So that's kind of my my base here brought in the rover did all the did the um added the physics vehicle and then did all the reparenting necessary for that and so all those changes are stored up here in the root layer and then from there what did i do from there so then i go to uh rec prep which is uh, getting ready to record and basically what you want to do is you want to get this um this recording prep so that you you know you you record your animation. You're going to save that as Animo 1 or Animo 2 or whatever you want to call it. Just save your animation files as USDs. And then you're going to go in there. You're going to edit them. You're going to remove all the physics stuff from them, like I showed you uh, last stream, which is a little bit hacky. And we're working on a better way. But that's the way you do it right now. And that way, when you want to use different animations in your main stage, you just drag those in as overs. And uh, it's going to pick up the animation. So that's pretty cool. But in the same, same way here, I created the 3DS Max terrain. And uh, if I just press play here, you can see how the, the rover's tires actuate. Oh. And boom. All right. So then I recorded that. Like I said, I recorded this. In this stage, send it to this, uh, saved it as an Anima 1 stage, 
Then I did the editing, which by the way, uh, you don't have to save as a USDA file. If you have the USDA extension, when's next create update scheduled? Anybody? I don't know. We just released the last one. So I would expect that it would be uh, some amount of time between now and it's released. I'm not sure. And I, if I knew, I couldn't tell you. So if you open up the uh, USDA extension, make sure that's on, then you can right click on any USD file, click edit, and you can do it that way. You don't have to save it as a USDA file. You can if you want, you don't have to. All right, so from there, so from there, I, um, I brought in the physics vehicle into a new stage. And uh, this is going to be my flow stage. Okay, so that's kind of uh, how that works. And sorry, it's, it should be the animation stage. Yes. So I brought in the animation into a new stage because, like I said before, you cannot and you don't want to uh, try to record your your animation of the vehicle and do all your flow work at the same time. It's just your computing resources is not going to work. So you want to do it with baked animation. All right, and then uh, you saw the result of that. So uh, let's just go ahead and I'm gonna open an empty stage and I'm just gonna go ahead and do all that what I just said. So I'm gonna bring in that um, the Rover Vehicle Animo 1. And that's cool. And we're already off to a great start. So that doesn't mean anything, that just holds the deltas. So I'm gonna take my Rover Physics Vehicle I'm gonna bring that in and then, sweet, perfect. I was hoping the gods of live stream would not be on my side <laughs> and they are the, oh, aha. okay, this is why. So I have my stage lights on. I don't have any lights in the stage. So I wanna set my default light. That way I can see what's going on. All right, so I have the rover here, and your first frame after you record, the wheels are going to be messed up. That just sort of happens. So if I scrub through this, you can see that, and I definitely want to change that to number of frames of the animation. And I'm working in 1080p mode here, so real estate's a little tight. Okay, but you can see we drive all around, and there you go. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to come up here to uh, window and simulation and presets, which is flow presets. Dock that there. And then also what you're really going to want to do is uh, window simulation monitor. Now, a lot of people don't know about this. It's, um, it shows you what your active block count is. And um, that's really important when figuring out what flow is doing. Flow is like kind of an unwieldy animal sometimes. You know, you really got to work with it, massage it, and um, we're trying to make it easier, but it, it can be a little bit uh, temperamental. Let me take a drink of water. <laughs> Don't judge me. Don't judge me. All right. Cool. So now we have that. So what we want to do is we want to add some dust. Oh, we're just going to drop that in. And boom, we're just going to drop that in right there. Okay, so um, never mind that I have a prim sitting outside the world default prim. I have broken that rule and uh, I am shamed, but that's just the way it is right now. So, um, right, so what we want from this dust sim, we don't necessarily want the flow emitter sphere. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disable that guy. Well, let me just run it so we can see it working. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Love new errors. <laughs> what the hell? What are you doing to me here? That's dumb. How about this. Ah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So check out what I did. This is good. Actually, I love it when I mess up and I have to explain what happened. So I didn't need to drop the physics vehicle in there. And when I did, 
what I did was it was trying to say, okay, I'm a physics vehicle. And then the animation was saying, go, go, go. And, uh, and it was getting confused and that's what those errors were. So, um, again, because I'm working in layers, what, what, has actually happened is see this rover physics vehicle, it created this delta, which contains the changes that um, it was trying to write. And this is why no tire movement, no actuation, the suspension, anything like that. So if I just come up here and I right click and delete that delta, that change that was made, you see we snap back into our um, in into the, the right configuration. And uh, what I just wanna do here is I want to remove that layer. Boop. See that? Now, if we press play, we're all good. All right, power of deltas. It's amazing. All right, so this uh, dust sim, where are you? You're probably over here somewhere. So if I press U and then I press F, you're going to see here we have this dust sim. And I don't really care about that. I don't want that. So I'm going to take this emitter sphere, but I do want the simulate off screen and render. Alternatively, if you want to do it this way. You can go to create flow, and then create each one of those um, each one of those prims manually. But the um, the uh, presets are a good way to to get yourself started quickly. So flow emitter sphere disable U, and then I want to just drag that down. And now what I want to do is I want to create. Um, another emitter. So I'm going to create flow and I'm going to create a box emitter. And where are you? These guys, these guys hide sometimes. I look dust emitter sphere. Oh, so it parented itself. Nice. It parented itself to uh, this guy, which we don't want. We want you to be underworld. All right. So flow emitter sphere, make sure it's at zero, good. And uh, then we want to control G, and we're going to put that in a group. We put that in a group so that it can be um, manipulated. One, and then I'm also going to create a cube. Might as well have been sketching a cube. And then I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna move that up here so we can see it. And uh, really important here that, now by default this is working, but sometimes new emitters will come in on a different layer. And the layers in flow are not like these layers. Layers in flow are like, uh, everything on the same layer will be affecting the thing on that layer. So right now it's layers, layer zero, but it, and if I press play, Here's my little flow coming up there. Um, if that was on layer one, then it would go away because all of the other flow nodes, flow simulate, it's on layer zero, right? All the layers here are what is directing your emitter. And, and it's a combo of the actual box and then all of these settings here. So I'll change that back to zero. There it is again. Uh, next thing I want to do is I want to reduce the size of my cube to 0.2. That's going to be the size of the box. So I'll just zoom in on that. Oops, slow down. Whoa, whoa. All right. I'm going to play, and there it is. All right. So now I guess um, I could parent this to the uh, to the vehicle right now, but I don't want to do it. What I want to do is just sort of get the flow um, working, uh, emitting the way I want. So if I come down here to velocity, and right now we're 400 on the Z, and that's going up. And I don't think I want that, though. So if I set that to, like, zero, it had little effect. And the reason that is, is because this uh, daggum advection over here also has a gravity setting. So if I set that to zero, then we're at kind of an even keel here. So let's go to, um, let's go back to the box. And I'm just going to scroll down to here in velocity Z. Let's make it like, this guy's moving pretty good. 
minus 2,500. And that's not amazing. If I did like minus 5,000, yeah, it's better. A little bit better, but we're gonna uh, play with some settings here. And then the advection, I generally use, um, if I, I want the, the flow pushing, I'm gonna use uh, the emitter for that. And then the advection is just gonna be like gravity. So, um, we can, and we can play with this later, but if I do like a minus five on that one, yeah, it should be better. You'll see. All right, so we'll take that. Good, all good. And now what I wanna do is I wanna parent this um, wheel to, to the vehicle. Ideally, I'd wanna parent it to the, to the wheel, um, but it's the same, for the same reason that I don't have um, the, I don't have the caliper workflow worked out, right? So anything that rotates that way, um, but not that way is gonna be, uh, I don't parent that to the wheel because if I do, then it's, it's gonna be flipping around the wheel and it's gonna look bad. So I'm just gonna dump that into the wheel and uh, you can see now it's a child of the, uh, the vehicle here. Not the physics vehicle, the vehicle, because the vehicle is the thing that's animated. And then I'm just going to uh, zero out, right click, right click, right click, F. And there we go. And now we're going to position it around the tire. So to do that, I want to drop that. And helpful to start the animation so that everything is in its place. And then you can just move this guy to where you want it to be. Else like that, and then maybe down there. Because what we want is we want this thing to be pushing flow towards the wheel. We're going to make it um, physics enabled so that the wheel is going to grab it and then spin it around, make it look a little bit better. So I'm going to scale it. And I'm not, the only thing I'm scaling is the X form. So um, so the flow is not affected at all, but it is going to, uh, it's gonna flow out from the entire space. And I use, the, um, I use the cube here to tell me what the scale of my flow sim is. Without it, looks like, uh, looks like that. And then I can't really tell where the flow sim is if I select it. Well, I can, but it's better to have this. All right. Boom, boom. All right. So now let's see. I'm prepared to be unimpressed by this. So that and ha, huh? we're halfway there. All right. So what is going on here? That and that's better. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to start dialing up some settings. Obviously, we need more smoke. We need helps a lot when the um, when the wheel is uh, colliding with it. So let's do that next. So I'm gonna that, grab the wheel, wheel three, right click, add physics, and you're gonna add a colliders preset. And you scroll down here to your colliders and all the colliders for flow have to be convex decomposition. So I uh, just set that and uh, let's see what we got. Hey, nothing. And you know why? Oops, 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 don't do that. Uh, because what we have to do is we have to tell flow that it is also going to be uh, physics enabled here. So flow simulate, come down. Funky boy, hello. Uh, collision enabled, yes. All right, cool. Now if I run it, you see a little, hey, better. All right, real estate. Well, I don't really need my layer panel. <sighs> Playing a dangerous game, Dave. Dangerous game. All right, but I'll do it for you guys. And let's just go, where, where are you? Find it. There it is. All right, cool. So now what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have um, more smoke happening. So in the flow emitter box down here, 
I'm going to come down and I'm going to start looking at some settings. Uh, let's see. Now let's give it more fuel. Fuel. Four. And then uh, smoke. We're just going to crank the smoke to like 128. And the rate of the smoke, 64. And that's probably maybe okay for that. But what we really want to do here is because we're we're really increasing our count now of um, of uh, voxels and um, or blocks. Sorry. So we're going to watch our flow monitor block count up here, and it's just going to go crazy. And then eventually, it's going to uh, nope out at forty ninety six. And when it does that, that's the end of your flow simulation there. There's some things we can do here. You can see the flow lingers. We can make it go away. Um, another way you know if you're running out of blocks, you get these weird squares things. So let's uh, let's fix that. Oh, OK. And then this is like, hey, look. OK, I'm just going to say it. If you're going to work with flow, you're going to need some GPU. Um, if you have eight gig card, you, get, you can get away with a little bit. Um, but you're going to want to have more VRAM then, um, you know, 12, better, 24, great, 48, awesome. And um, you know what I'm working with is 48. So, uh, but we have this max blocks here. What we want to do is we want to set that, and that's going to increase the, the cap of the number of blocks that you have. So I like, um, for this one, like 16,000. It's probably good. It's uh, it's gonna acquire more VRAM. So <clears throat> if you're, you know, crash and create or whatever, run out of blocks. Uh, well, no, you crash create first, then drop that down. Uh, default is forty ninety six as you saw. So, um, you know, eight thousand. You might be able to get away with eight thousand. And these are, you know, these are great for real time settings, but um, we don't really care a lot. Um, just so that we can see the flow in real time, that's uh, that's what we want. All right. So now that I've up my blocks, let's see uh, let's see what we got going on. Better, better, and we're still going to run out because our original here is just lingering. So that's not good, and it's only one wheel. So we want to uh, reduce some of that stuff. And for that, we're going to come back in here. And uh, let's see. Let me get a drink of water. Any comments, questions? Does anyone care? Do you want to see the 3DS Max live sync at the end? Whatever. If you do, great. If you don't, fine. Uh, we'll see what we get with this. And you know. I know you're all saying it in your heads. Why not just drop a sandy material on there? Because that looks bad. So I'll do that. That, OK. And then probably whew, the dance. Probably come in here, go there, and uh, scroll down here, and set our texture scale to something like 100. Still looks bad, but better bad. All right, stage that route. This is the max thing. Bad. All right, back to where we were. Where were we? Uh, we were running out of blocks. And so what we need to do is we need to control that a little bit better. And to do that, I'm going to come into Flow Simulate. Now, Flow Simulate has this advection and uh, some others, vorticity pressure, summary allocate. But Advection has in all these <laughs> all these children. Excuse me. Um, and this is where a lot of your a lot of your settings are gonna happen. So what do I want? Do I want force fade? No. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's just go down to smoke. And fade 0.15. Let's 
let's crank that up to like two. Not fast enough. More fade. Yeah. Okay, more fade. Three. I'm also throwing a lot of smoke at it, so there's a lot more to fade. But it's getting better, and the more that fade out gives me room. Okay, that's good, but again, it's only one tire, and I'm already at like 9,000 blocks. So I could also affect that with the cooling rate. I want it to cool faster. Uh, so let's go like B. A lot of this. It's a lot of make a change, run the sim. Make a change, run the sim. Yeah. Oh, and also, uh, let me just say that I don't know of a case where you're going to want 800 frames of a baked flow simulation. Um, generally, you're going to want to do, you know, the sim for the shot that you have, which might be, you know, four seconds or something like that. Okay, that's a, yeah, that's all right. Uh, another way we can control that is uh, here, if you click on flow simulate, this uh, density cell size, and that's gonna control the detail of the smoke, but if you're running out of blocks or whatever, you can um, up that. Um, if I were to reduce it, it'd be more detailed smoke, but it would be, um, I'd be running out of blocks a lot faster. Uh, if I if I raise that value, then it's going to be less detailed smoke, but um, I'm going to be not spooling up. And still, you know, okay. It's close up. Like I said, this is 800 frames. So if you if it's just uh, you know a couple hundred frames, 300 frames, still 10 seconds. Anyway, I'm just saying you can manage it that way. All right, so that's better. Not done, but better. All right, so now I'm gonna duplicate this. Do a little control D on that guy and slide it over. And all right, I think what I wanna do is take, generally you want the settings to be kind of, at least for the, um, for the box emitter, you want them to be, uh, for one, it's gonna be one for all. So you're gonna want them to be, do the settings on one and then duplicate it, obviously. Um, and if you have to change something after this in the emitter, then make sure you select both of them or all four of them or whatever, however many you have. And you're gonna, it's gonna show you what um, the common properties that they have. So you can change, um, you can change multiple there. Okay, and then uh, I think we just hide the cubes now. Okay, so what happened is I moved the cubes down, or I moved the, the emitters down, and now I'm not getting action, as much action on the, uh, on the wheels as I like. The issue is that Let's see if I unhide these cubes. Let's move them back up. Here. The issue is that if I if my shot is like from the front, then I'm gonna see these big blocks of um, smoke. And I uh, don't really have a good way around that. I mean, basically, like if I wanted to go back to uh, the way they were, down low here. I'd want to adjust the the um, the spray from the emitter to go more at an upward angle, so it hits, so it kind of hits the tire, and the tire throws it all around. Uh, so I guess I could try that. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, Let's save that part because I know you guys really just want to know. All right, good, good. I've messed with it. I have a simulation that I kind of like. 
how the heck in the world do I bake this? And so what I would do first, you don't want to save this file and I'll just call it flow smoke. All right. So, um, right. So how do we bake this now? So what we're going to do is first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click we are going to create a volume density material like that. Uh, we're going to come down to our um, dust, which has our flow simulate in it. And under flow simulate is nano VDB export. And here, maybe I'll just do one of those. And uh, what do I want to do? No, don't want to do that. What am I doing? Oh, the properties. Okay, that just so we can see it. Okay. All right, so now we have um, this volume density material, which is perfect. So when we come down to Nano VDB export, uh, we want to, first of all, we want to enable it. And what do you want to enable? Right now, um, I think, so Andrew Reedmeyer is the god of flow here at NVIDIA. He does all the development work for it and helps me out every time. I need help. And uh, last I talked to him, we don't support baking the uh, the fuel, the fire to um, to uh, VDBs yet. That might have changed. I haven't tested it, but as far as I know, uh, that's the case. Anyway, for this one, it's smoke enabled anyway. And then read back is going to be: Do you want to read when you write out those VDBs? Do you want to read them back into a material? And I do want to do that. Now, this clear on start, clear on stop is, um, this can get you. Uh, I always turn them off because what happens is you, if you have clear on start, which is cool because you want to redo it, right? And you press the go button and it'll just clear out what you have there and start writing back to it. The problem is if you open this or somebody else opens it and they're not aware of this uh, and they press play, it's going to try to write back into that file, which means it's going to clear on start, which means the VDB sim you just recorded, which by the way, takes time. It's like rendering, basically. Um, it doesn't happen like bam, 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 bam. Uh, they're going to wipe all that out and you're going to lose it. And that'll be really sad. So don't uh, just deselect that. Okay, you've been warned. Uh, and then for the material, like where do we want to, where do we want to write back that material that uh, sequence to and that's going to be the volume density material we just created all right sweet and so from here now you could press play yeah funky boy that's a good question any plans to simplify these types of physics bakes yes yes we're actively working on it and we would love to hear suggestions as well um, so from here now, uh, I could press play and it would try to start writing the VDBs. Oh, no, it won't because I haven't specified a directory. Doi. All right. So here is one I ran yesterday. So I'll just, uh, go up one folder and I'll see. Okay. That folder. All right. Okay. So now that's all kind of set up. And um, what I would want to do here, what I do anyway, is I'm going to save as, and I'm going to call this uh, VDB alt. Second one. And uh, that way, I open the previous, my flow stage to, you know, tune settings or whatever. And then uh, when I have them the way I want, I'm going to make this new stage called VDB, which is all the baking that I'm going to do. All right. So like I said, you could press play and kick it off, and it will try to write the VDBs. But the problem is that you're going to be competing for resources, which means that your flow is going to be weird, and it's not going to be great. So, um, so what you want to do there is uh, you don't want to do it that way. What you want to do is you want to go Window, Rendering, Movie Capture, and uh, set up your frames or whatever. Let's see, I'll just do like 
I don't even know if we're going to get to 100, but I'll just set it to 100. And then you're going to want to be in path trace mode. One sample, one path trace sample. And um, jury's out on motion blur. Uh, I don't use it because it takes more time. Andrew says that it'll give you better sims if you do it that way. But so that's that. And then basically for the capture, these are just throwaway, um, throwaway stuff. So that and then that, one of those. And we'll just go you. Uh, folder and then we'll just say delete me okay so now all these things are set up we have our volume material ready to accept the vdbs that we're about to push out the vdbs are enabled readback is enabled so we're going to push them back into this volume material and we're going to go ahead and uh, capture the sequence it starts off really fast but then as the frames, oh, see, I wouldn't want that block there, would I? As the frames, um, ah, look at what I didn't do. I didn't set that. I didn't put physics on that tire. Bad. All right, so let's go to that directory now. Oh, you, that guy, projects, and, Friday Live and you. Ah. Oh, no. Where did I put it? Oh, VDB baking. Okay. Oh, I should show you. Okay. So it got to the 100 frames. So under more VDB now, we have all the VDBs we just cooked out. Okay. And you can see they progressively get larger. And then, don't need that. Uh, in our volume density now, you can see it's we have the sequence that's been written to there. So uh, first thing we want to do, though, is we want to come down to nano VDB export, and we want to eh, say, no, do not do that anymore. Disable those guys. And then we're going to come, and um, if you scrub through this now, you know, you're going to see there's no, no VDBs, and that's because uh, Baked VDBs do not work in real-time mode. So we're going to go interactive path trace mode. And you're going to scrub through and say, still no. And I say, yes, that's expected. Because we need to create the, um, the volume. So I'm going to come in here, just in the stage, create a cube. It can be sitting at zero. No problem. I'm going to assign it that volume density material. Now you can see, aha, I'm loading it up. And hey, still nothing. And why is that? Because <laughs> in your render settings here, if you go to path trace, you have to enable this uh, non-uniform volumes. And then once you enable that, then we should be good to go. Should be good to go. Oh, uh, where are you? Oh, I didn't do a thing. F plus, no, ah, ha, ha. damn, you're right. You're right, you're right. This, should, this needs to be easier. So uh, why one sample? One sample because uh, we do not need to, here, let me show comments. I need to use this thing. Oh, okay, what's that? Why one sample? So one sample because we're not interested in rendering the, the rendering process just makes the bake go through its full cycle. Um, if you run real-time mode, then it's like competing. Hey, hey, I'm trying to do the next frame, do the next frame as fast as possible. And um, with, um, with using Movie Maker, you get frame, 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 frame. So it, it, it gets a more uh, comprehensive sim out of it. All right, so yes, so all those things that uh, I didn't do. And the one thing that I need to do is tell this cube that it's a volume. OK, so now that I tell it's the volume, it's like, oh, OK, well, then I have a thing. All right? Look at that. And 
tell me if this is getting choppy. I, I suspect at this point it's going to be getting really choppy. So basically now you have your flow sim and it is um, rendering in path trace mode. And you can do a bunch of things with it, which is pretty neat. So what I'm going to do is come over here to content. And I'm going to open up the other VDB. Open up the other VDB. Mm. Yes. OK, it's choppy. Check on the choppy. You, gone. OK, fine, save it. Save. Thank you for that. All right, and uh, so I had to make my monitor 1080p to maybe avoid this chop, which didn't work. And so now I just got to resize this little window to be tiny. Is that what I want to do? Or do I want to do this? And say, go back to that. Keep changes. No, no, this doesn't work with your 1080, man. Sorry. Omniverse won't work with your 1080. It's got to be uh, 2,000, at least 2,000. But even then, mileage will vary. All right, so this is the other computer. Hopefully, this isn't choppy. Don't save. Oh, F. Ah, man, this isn't going to work because... I wrote to my local disk, and my local disk is on this computer and not that one. So that's a big F for me on that one. So what can we do here, though? Eh. Uh, one second. Let's just, sorry, sorry. We got we to do it. It's going to be choppy. Mm. But you should see it. <laughs> F as in fudge sickles. Uh, nano VDBs are holding the density. I'm assuming we still can figure out how the smoke can run RT as well. Yep. Uh, cannot render VDBs anti, uh, only PT right now. And uh, the materials, that's what I was going to try and show you. You can't assign a material to the sim, but you can control its density and its, um, and its color right now, which, I mean, it gets you down the road quite a bit. So where are we? We're here, Friday Live. Get there. And action. OK. You, stages, BDB. All right, this is going to be choppy, but I will try to let it come to a rest before I start messing with it. OK. And window animation timeline. And move that timeline up there. I still got my cubes. What a pleb. Yeah, 12 gigabytes is good. Uh, if you can do more, do more, especially with Omniverse. The more you can do, the more you can do, right? The more VRAM you can have, the more you can you can do. Yeah. <laughs> no. All right, so let's just get out of this camera. Go to perspective. And copy for you, sorry. Oh, these aren't the cubes, they're the, the flow. All right. Oh, one thing I can do here to help out maybe is drop this down to something like four. All right. And then maybe even in post processing. Yeah. yeah darken a little bit. Okay. So now this is a sim I ran yesterday. And the thing I really like about this is how the, um, smoke plays with the light 
So from here, uh, if I go back into my looks and the volume density, um, I can dial up and down the, the density scale. So if I wanted to be 0.1, it's obviously a lot lighter. If I really wanted to crank it up to like something like 1 or 20, then obviously it's going to be a lot heavier. Um, it's If you're using a static VDB, just a single like cloud, you get awesome, awesome God rays out of that. Uh, it's a really cool way to get good God rays, just so you know. And then um, I can also play with the color here. If I wanted to be more like orangey, then I could do something like that. And I have this, um, I'm, I'm kind of wondering how choppy this is for you based on the way my computer's performing. Probably not great. Gonna have to solve that problem. Yeah, and obviously the more EDB you have up on the stage, uh, the crazier it's gonna get. And the slower, you know, you're... Uh... Okay, thank you. All right. And then when you scrub the timeline, right, you're, you gotta wait for the VDBs to load here. These are all fading out. Also, when you try to select something, you're probably, if it's a big um, sim, you're probably selecting the, vol the dust volume itself. So uh, that helps to know that. And I want to actually select you. Oh, it's terrible. All right, anyway, that is basically the, uh, the workflow for how you bake this out into a sim. And um, we definitely want to try and make it easier. But until that time, uh, at least you know how to do it. And this is just for, um, you know, for the tires. But if you want to do something, you know, for a, like a jet exhaust or whatever, then you can uh, do that uh, as well, like whatever you want to do. So 22, we got eight minutes. Uh, I guess what I'll do, okay, so first of all, I'll, I'll ask if uh, there's any questions. Any questions at all? Or was it just that easy? Okay. Let's... How is the VDB tied to the current frame? Uh, because it's just referencing, if I go back to this good, good question, if I go back to this volume density texture, and I just scrub that, you can see that the um, it's just running through the sequence that we baked into the uh, into the material. And that's what that readback was all about when in the uh, the flow sim here. Let me did this guy, and then that guy. That's what this uh, readback enabled. It wrote the sequence into the volume material. So that's how that's controlled. Um, you could, from here, like if you wanted to use this um, in another stage for whatever reason. Uh, let's say it was just kind of a generic, it wasn't like specific to an animation, but a generic like explosion or a, a fire smoke or whatever, then uh, you could right click on this material and you can uh, say save selected, which is gonna save the material inside of a USD file, or you can export to MDL, which is going to create uh, the MDL on disk. And then it'll also retain its path to um, to your uh, your VDB files. Now, if you have to move the VDB files somewhere and and repath it, okay, this is untested by me. But what I think you could do, yes, what could you do? I don't know. Let's try it. Well, I'm not going to move them because there's like a million gigabytes in there. But uh, if I were to save selected and call this the Oh. 
All right, you see it shows up there. That's a good first step. And then if I click edit, come on, no whammies. Okay, good, there they are. So here we have all the all the VDBs here. And um, you know, if I move them to uh, another disk, or if I even push them up to Nucleus, because that's what I should also say, is that when you go to, um, if, you, if you have a farm and you want to render this on the farm, uh, the VDBs have to be collected, which means they have to be sitting on the server. And so, um, oh, so annoying. Uh, so what you would do is you would upload them and then you change the path to where those are and uh, whether it be another disk or on the server somewhere and uh, then they would they would render on the farm so that's pretty cool but uh, that's how you would do that and I could also take that now and dump it into another stage as a layer and um, and it would obviously play the uh, the sim all right so four minutes to go I can't believe we made it through that in less than an hour that's pretty amazing and uh, okay, so I guess for the remaining time, okay, if you're gonna bail now, hey, thanks a lot for joining. I hope it was helpful. Hope you learned a couple things. And um, if you bake something with it, just hit hit us up on Discord, um, hit us up on the forums, hit us up on Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever you like to social, and uh, or uh, Instagram too. Yeah, whatever, all the things. Uh, if you are new to Omniverse, the way you get it is you search for NVIDIA Omniverse Launcher on Google. And thanks, buddy. Thanks, Daniel. Dan Daniellen? Daniellen, 3D. Uh, yeah, so grab the launcher, install it, go to Exchange, and uh, you can download, create, and view, and cache, and all the things that uh, make Omniverse work. Uh, also, your connectors. So, if you're using 3ds Max or Maya or God, there's so many, you don't even know how many, but there's a lot of software that this connects to. So, um, odds are that you use a piece of software that we have a live connection into. But I guess what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to hide the dust volume. So, hopefully. You can be able to see it now. Now, you wouldn't want to do this. Um, in fact, maybe there's the wrong stage to do it in, but it looks nice. OK, let's see. Where is this terrain at? Terrain. If you want to find the path. I'm going to do the live sync to Max now. So yeah, sorry, I'm skipping around. If if you're done and you don't want to, you don't care about 3ds Max live sync, awesome. Thank you very much for joining. And uh, we will see you next Friday at uh, whatever we do then should be should be good whatever it is i need to open max first and for all those of you hanging around uh, you're going to see 3ds max to create live sync oh happy new year ah, see look at me i'm no host i don't internet Happy New Year, everybody. A few short days away, hopefully, is a great one for you. Filled with lots of great experiences and learnings and all that stuff. OK, give me one second here. OK, so I have Max open now. And what I want to do is um, usually I'm going to want to do this before I bake the animation, right? Because it would be silly to change the terrain when you have baked animation. So if I come down here, I'm going to open up. Am I going to open up? Which one is it? It's going to be record prep. And hopefully there will be less skipping now. And hopefully it opens. So while that's thinking, OK, good. Nope, nope, you. 
just going to dock you right there and dock you right there. Do a little Alt W there. And uh, you can see I have this terrain layer here. Oh, and I'm even uh, got a live session open. All right. So, uh, but I've already baked it in. Uh, it doesn't matter. You, you, there's nothing in the live session. If there was, there'd be a little plus here and there'd be all kinds of deltas and whatever in there. So what do I want to do here? Do I just want to create a new one? Yeah, let's create a new one. Who cares? Uh, so let's go ahead and get out of the live session. And I'm going to remove this layer. OK, cool. Uh, and then what I'm going to do in Max, I'm just going to create a plane. And let's make it, uh, oh, it doesn't matter. Let's just export it here. Ugh, screen real estate. So I'm going to push it up to the server. I'm working on a cloud server today, by the way. In fact, whenever you see me, I'm going to be working on a cloud server. Currently in closed beta, but closed betas tend to become open betas. And it's a great way to collaborate with all your um, colleagues on stuff. All right, so root. So we just changed this. It used to be world, but now it's root. So I'm thinking that very soon world default print will become root. Anyway, train two is what we're going to export as. So export. That should be pretty quick. All right. And that's probably going to be up here in props, 3ds max, terrain, and train two. So I'm going to drop that in as a layer. OK, and we don't see it because it's too small. That's fine. And then from 3ds Max now, oh, dude, crazy. I'm going to create my session. And if you want to do live work in 3ds Max, say you have modifiers uh, on things and you don't want to lose them, then you're going to want to create the session in Max, not in Create. Join it in Max. And when you do create it, keep local source. Fetching from Omniverse is going to bring in a, a flat, dumb poly. All right, so that's good. And that, and that. And then I want to, since I created it here, I want to join it from create. So I'm going to join the session. And I see train 02 is the session I just created. And it says I have joined my session, which is awesome. Now. What I want to do is I want to make this a lot bigger. So let's go 5,000, 5,000. Okay. Where are you, Train? Hello? Killing me. Ah, OK. All right, all right. So <laughs> USD is all path-based, right? And I have this, I had originally had a plane in here. I didn't like it. I deleted it. So that delta for that deletion now lives on plane one. And when I created this one, it is called plane one. So if I just change this to like terrain plane, then re export it. Okay, Omniverse, export. Selected, and we're going to overwrite terrain two. Yeah, that can be confusing. Now, when I've done that, it says, "Hey, uh, the file has changed." I'm going to fetch it, and now I have my my terrain. So, it's still not big enough. So, let's go like thirty thousand. And. I did that, I left the live session. So I'm actually going to create a new one. The other one, uh, and keep local source. <laughs> and come over here, layer, view, leave it. And then we're going to want to join that new session. All right, now. Now we should be live. So I'm just going to do a little test of that. Let's move that over. Yeah, it's easy to move. OK, 
So first thing is this uh, train is way too not detailed enough. So I'm going to change this to like 64 and 64. And that all these changes are happening live. You won't see it yet till I uh, add the displace modifier. So if I come in here and I go, uh, I always like to keep an edit poly at the top of the stack just to be safe. So if I come here to displace and um, Okay, I'm going to want to grab a displacement map, which I have right here. I found a cool website that lets you get these displacement maps there in pictures. Oh, downloads. Height map. Yeah. So I have this height map here. I'm just going to drag it on into. Um, the material editor and it looks like that and then I'm going to drag that into map and make sure it's instanced and that's great and then I'm going to uh, set my strength to something like I don't know 1000 cool still needs to be detailed we can worry about that but from the perspective of the Vehicle here, yeah, probably good, probably plenty bumpy. You can play with that all you want. If you want to, uh, you know, scale it, you can scale it and it'll smooth it out a little bit. And that's kind of what I did there. It should look familiar. And then from, uh, from the stage here, you can grab the, where's the plane? Plane one. Train plane. Okay. And uh, you can up the refinement. Camel Clark can go something like three on that. That should smooth it out. And if you keep your refinement inside of create, then the data is going to flow from max to create a lot faster because there's a lot less uh, vertices to worry about here. Uh, okay. And just to show you that I can still do things if I make that like three. Yeah. Right, and then from there, um, because my root layer is my authoring layer, so that that refinement change that I made to the mesh, that change actually lives in the root layer as a delta, which is awesome, non-destructive, just like we like it. Now I want to add some physics to it, which will also live in this uh, root layer. And scroll down, triangle mesh should be good. If you want to check, your physics here, um, you go to eyeball by type, physics colliders selected, and then I can see my physics cage and that looks good enough. Yeah, physics colliders, none. All right, so now I can just uh, drive around on my newly created um, train. And then if I don't like it, if I wanna like, add a jump or whatever, I can totally do that in Max and then uh, get pretty instantaneous feedback here in Create. And I can mess with UV maps and all that stuff. So, okay. Woo. Oh, that, nope, dead. Okay, anyway, that's just what I wanna show you. That's how I created that train, uh, terrain, and I want to give uh, some props to Autodesk and 3ds Max. And um, that will end this stream. Hopefully this was valuable, et cetera, et cetera. You're all awesome for attending and thank you. And uh, we will um, see if any questions. Ah. Yes, a lot of ground to cover. So yes, okay. Sorry, man. I was focused over here and not over here. So. Let's jump through some questions here just for, uh, can, can we make a game with Omniverse? Sort of. Yes, sort of. Uh, I don't know how, I don't do that, uh, but I, I know we have like marbles that you can run as a, a, a executable and things like that, so it's possible. I just don't know how to do it. So technically the answer is yes, I just don't know how to do it. 
Omniverse is packaged how many cloud software companies? A bunch. I don't have the exact number, but it's Mac. You know, off the top of my head, it's Blender, Max, Maya, Substance, Painter, uh, Revit. Let's get off the top of my head. <laughs> Revit. Oh, yeah, of course. Real Illusion, ActorCore. And um, this is our internal stuff. Uh, Unreal, obviously. Graphisoft. Some of these are unreleased, so I probably shouldn't be showing them. But uh, there's a lot. OK. All right, that's it. There's a lot. Can you go back and watch this? Absolutely. It's going to be recorded. It should be available right when um, I stop streaming. Thanks for the flow session. I hope you keep them going. Yeah, a lot of ground to cover, for sure, especially in the tuning and what things mean and how to do stuff with it. Um, we haven't even got to fire yet. Fire's cool. Uh, and that is sick. Thank you. All right. If anybody's here, appreciate it. Have a great week. Happy New Year. See you on the other side. Peace.